Welcome back to Sunless Skies. In the last episode, we did a lot of reconstruction and rebuilding of Titania. And it's just about time to go to Eleutheria. But before that, we have just a couple small things to do in the Reach. There's still more to build a Titania. To build anti-bee defenses, we needed to bring some caged catches, which I didn't have at the time. But I've now come from New Winchester back here with four caged catches, which should be enough, I think. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think I have to advise on the next upgrade? Yes. Suggest research into anti-bee defenses. Takes three caged catches. The soporific poison from your caged catches prove as effective as the Rhapsodic Mayor had hoped. Mixed with Titania's pollen, they lower the hive from the public areas, and soon the Chorister Hive scouts find themselves slipping into restful sleep. The mayor clicks her fingers. Get some ropes, she orders. I have an idea. Oh, looks like that's the end of building Titania. You have finished building Titania. A new lineage may make different choices on and unlock alternative options. For now, each new captain can enjoy the boons you've made available as well as take advantage of bargains and prospects from your buildings. Okay, so that's the end of it. Is it the Benthic College Enclave? That's where the workshop is, right? We've already been there. We've built that stuff. I've already gotten my boon used for this captain. Hmm. There's probably nothing else to do here, then. Oh, actually, no. We haven't been to the Chorister Hive yet. What was once the greatest threat to this port has become one of its crowning glories. A few stragglers from the recent attack buzz happily around a spacious new hive. Pollen is delivered each morning, and delicious nectar can be harvested from artificial honeycombs, with no threat to Titania. Now relatively harmless, they are almost becoming a symbol of the growing colony. Oh, that's cool, so they didn't just kill the bees, they just kind of controlled them. And they get to live out their little bee lives. That's nice. Purchase some chorister nectar, fresh from the hive, delicious on toast. 60 sovereigns is a really good deal for chorister nectar. Can I only do that once? The gourd is warm to the touch and sticky around the rim. The biggest challenge of storing it will be preventing the crew's sneaking tastes. Oh no, I can just keep doing it. Ooh. I'm pretty sure that's an amazing deal. I have a crap ton of course your nectar on me right now because I killed a ton of bees getting here. They were very angry at me. Do I have a deal to get? No, there's no bargain, so I might as well get as much honey as possible then. Yeah, I bought the nectar for 60 and it sells at the Victoria Market for 120 double. And it seems like I can get unlimited of it. Or at least I got like six or something and it didn't look like there was a limit. That feels too easy, though. <clears throat> because what's to stop you from just doing trade runs between New Winchester and Titania? Pretty short trip? Get rid of everything but just a little bit of fuel and supplies, and you could easily... I mean, I could easily carry, like, 30 honey at one time. And I would make 30 times 60 in profit. What's to stop you from just doing that and generating infinite money? I'm not going to do that, because that sounds really boring, but... I don't know, maybe there is a limit, and I just haven't reached it yet. I'm going to sell the things I have a million bajillion of. Anything... I'm going to sell everything down to... 30? Even that's too much, right? I'll sell everything down to, like... Nah, okay, we'll do 30. So like 14 of the tea. 18 of the nectar. That's already 3,400. Um, I don't have a massive amount of other stuff. I really could sell more. I could totally sell down to 20 and still be comfortable. But, you know, it's not like I need the money right now anyway. At Lustrum now. The last bit of business we have in the reach, I think. There's supposed to maybe be... A sigil here. 
I was about to just do some of the terror lowering stuff like drinking tea and joining the celebration with the mountain sings thing. I was going to do that off camera, but I noticed there's an option here that I don't remember being here. Investigate the soup cellar. The man stirs a large cauldron with a wooden ladle. As you draw closer, the thick aroma of a meat stew drifts over. An unfrequented soup stall. Want some? He waggles a full ladle at you. It's free. I'll fill you a flask for later. Despite being on the edge of the prospector's shantytown, no one else is taking him up on his offering. That sounds really suspect. Let's do it. <laughs> Eat your fill. He asks for nothing but the pleasure of a good deed done. So he says. Perhaps the man is older than he looks, for his hands shakes as he moves to serve you. He swears, then apologizes when he spills a clot of tomato on your shoe. The stew is sharp with spice and rich with fat. Chunks of onion bob lazily, jostling the soft flesh that falls apart in your mouth. You just gotta cook it slow, he says, refusing to disclose his butcher. Gain one supplies, and now every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. The fuck does that mean? I really should not have eaten that. Port report. Oh no, the sigil is at the top of the mountain. We gotta climb it. At least our iron is better than it was before. It shouldn't be too bad. Let's drink some tea. <sighs> oh, sweet chain. Do I have anything to do there? I have five charred nameplates. If I trade in 12, I'll get a moment of inspiration. That would be very, very good. I don't even have half that, though. Climb the... Actually, hold on. This is worth switching out an officer for. 38%. Oh, I no, I do have the plus 10 iron here. Plus 2. I could gain a little bit more there. Mirrors. Oh, here we go. This will gain me... 6 iron. From 38 to... 38? Uh, maybe I need to, like, re-go into it. Yeah, there we go. 43. That's a pretty nice little boost. I think that's all I can do. Well, I can get two iron here. From 43... to 45. The Singh Jenkins expedition was hunting for sigils. There's reports they headed up there. Or headed up here, rather. <clears throat> oh, success. The cold is vicious. Rocks crumble, turning solid ground into a grasping abyss. The snow is sometimes waist deep. Team members take turns at the front, flattening a path for the rest to follow. Near the summit, ice mummified and huddled together, are two corpses. The bodies have the quill and star emblem of the Singh Jenkins expedition sewn into their frozen jackets. Carved on the mountain behind them is a sigil. You copy it quickly and make your way back down. The wound that saves your life. <clears throat> a ragged sigil of loss and devastation, of bitter survival. Store the sigil safely. Once back in your locomotive, you copy the sigil to a thick sheet of parchment and store it in a brass box. You return to your notes on the Singh Jenkins expedition. Finding this sigil cost them two bears, half their provisions, and a donkey. It took less from you. The clerk's notes suggest that Singh and Jenkins began their expedition at a great obelisk in the Reach. It also said that they went off the maps into the sunless wastes where the winds wait. Yeah, so that's hinting where more of the stuff is, although we already kind of figured that out from what we learned at the obelisk. 
the obelisk gets talking about is at the circus. And then it also mentioned that uh, from there, that there were sigils on both ends of the Eleutheria relay and also at Lustrum. Mm, I need three more. Yeah, so that's probably... Wait, what would be the third one? One on each end of the relay plus... I guess one inside of Eleutheria somewhere, probably. Almost at the Eleutheria Transit Relay, just took a stop at Hybris, and there's something unique here to do. We can try to find the downed locomotive, which is that quest we got a long time ago to find a downed tackety locomotive. I stepped up and <clears throat> used one of my Sky stories to convince them that I'm like a big shot captain or something. I'm not, I'm not sure why I told a story, but uh, yeah, let's find the downed locomotive. The bogs and marshes of Hybris are dense and obscured with rotting fungus, but somewhere in the interior, a locomotive has gone down. You lead a small team through the slopsome marshes and the groaning fungal forests, where the drone of insects infected by fruiting spikes of fungus drowns out all other sound. Hidden deep in the bogs, you have almost passed by the fallen engine. The tackety engine rises from the marsh like a stick in the water, battered and smoking. Oh, I can actually report it to the Windward Company, note down the location, and tip them off. Oof. Evil. Of course, we're not doing that. Let's help the crew. A few tackities are attempting a rescue of the lower quarters, while others are sending damp, mushroomy smoke signals up through the fungal canopy. You order your crew to pitch in, donning wet suits and gathering cloth about your mouths. The leader of the Tacketys is the second lieutenant. Captain went down when we were hit off the white arches. Who guides you through the creaking engine. The ramshackle locomotive is seeping with marsh water and reeks of damp. Dragging out unconscious crew and salvaging supplies takes hours, but the lieutenant refuses to leave a man behind. As night draws in, she goes in with you one last time. At the bottom of the engine, all but sunk in the marsh, is a heavy box that takes two to carry out. We can get passage from here. Couldn't lose this. Gain 10 fortune with the Tagadies, 10 reputation. 150 experience. Glad to help, my Tagady friends. Almost at the Eleutheria Transit Relay. There should be a sigil that we can get on this side and the other side. Mm, don't see it yet. Uh, present myself to customs. Nothing to declare. I don't see anything about it. Hmm. Strange. Well, let's travel there. about on this end? Hmm, here we go. Examine the relay's correspondence for one of the lost sigils. Ah, oh, it takes an Eleutherian mystery. I have 16. Nice. It glimmers angrily in the rusted elbow of the relay's arm, but it's damaged, incomplete. Perhaps you could guess at its missing angles by basing them on other sigils you've glimpsed in Eleutheria? The relays were based on discoveries made by Singh and Jenkins, who also led an expedition across the heavens in search of lost and hypothesized sigils. Using notes on the Singh Jenkins mission and your Eleutherian knowledge, you finally establish how the sigil should be written and what it means. A sigil of flight, of escape, of hunting, of prey. Record the sigil more permanently. The reconstructed inscription is fragile. The paper would disappear in a wisp were it to catch flame. It has already attempted to combust twice. 
a sigil is better stored on a clay tile than paper. Perhaps if, perhaps if the Sing Jenkins expedition had done the same when they discovered it, the sigil would have remained found. The clerk's notes state that Sing and Jenkins began their expedition at a great obelisk in the Reach. Okay, we've already done that. Um, one member of the expedition left them before they were lost and became one of Eleutheria's blind hermits. Perhaps you could find further sigils in these places. Right, the blind hermits that you can come across all over the place. Basically, I guess sort of the equivalent of homesteads. Okay. <clears throat> It's been so long since I've been here. Hello, Eleutheria. The last majorly unexplored place on the entire map. I mean, Blue Kingdom basically done. A couple pretty small places, but I don't think there's going to be any ports there. Albion, basically completely explored. The Reach, definitely completely explored. But Eleutheria, only like half explored. Well, Aklis is on the way to Pan, so perhaps I should stop there. They sell fuel and supplies, so I don't need to worry about my fuel, which is kind of low. Yeah, let's go there. I have a vague memory of, of somebody telling me that the... Um, what do they call the grief something? Things that eat distance and sleep until you get near them. And then they rush at you trying to chomp down at you. Not the Eaters of the Dead, but... I think it had grief in the name. Anyway, I think somebody told me that you can get moments of inspiration from them. Maybe? I might be remembering that wrong, but... If there's any chance that that's true, then I need it. Because I need inspiration for things in general, and especially for getting rid of nightmares. This is where Langley Hall is. But if I remember right, to continue there, I also need moments of inspiration. be able to finally find the lost captain in the swamp here in Aklis. This place is such a rickety marshy marvel. Midnight continues. There's another, another battle taking place in the monastery gates. It'd be easy enough to ignore it, but both sides would likely be grateful for assistance. Definitely going to help Secret's Ringbreaker Urchins. 49% chance. Failure. Unsuccessful route. Oh shit, I lost three crew. With your assistance, the Ringbreakers managed to chase off the attackers, but the damage is done. Uh, cracks spear through the monastery's walls, raining dust down from above. Sigrid calls the retreat, and her urchin guard returns to the port to lick their wounds. Unfortunately, not all of your crew survive the encounter. Damn. That's a lot of people to lose at one time. Shall I go patrolling with the ringbreakers? Sure. I think we've done this before. Hunt for tea poachers in the swamp, forage in the swamp. I don't need to look for verdant seeds. I don't know what this would do. The game of the ring breakers would probably reduce tear. If I remember right, Eleutheria, it's kind of hard to reduce tear. Hmm. Let's 
hunt for tea poachers in the swamp. A few ringbreakers are willing to join you in actually doing their duty. Yes. Got a caddy of dried tea. With the ringbreakers at your back, you effortlessly track and surprise a group of marsh poachers. The ringbreakers tie their hands behind their backs with vines and give you first pick of their illegal goods. <laughs> the bargain is verdant seeds. It's like the cheapest thing that you can possibly have a bargain of. Ooh, what happened to this text here? It's all messed up. <clears throat> Let's go to the floating market, get a port report. I barely remember what any of these things do. Court of tea and spices. Ah, right, I can purchase tea in bulk. I don't have room for it, though. I've only got two slots. I could visit the Midnight Garden again. Ooh, do you think the Midnight Garden may be able to get rid of nightmares? Hmm. Maybe. Let's see what I can do here. Attend another tea ceremony. Heck yeah, let's do it. Oh, wait, was that it? The Midnight Connoisseur seems shocked at your request. Few enough get to sample their precious tea once. Nobody gets to have seconds. Oh, so wait. Did I actually do it? Did I actually spend the money, or are they just saying no? No, they're just saying no, they're not even doing it. Okay. Fair, I guess. Murgatroyd's Taste of Albion. I've already spoke with them. Good purchase tea. I think it's probably discounted here. 90 sovereigns. I'm not sure if that's a discount or not. But I don't think there's anything we want to do there. What's the House of Silks? Oh, hello. Present the seal of Mr. Barleycorn to Mr. Pipes. Hmm. Mr. Pipes. I don't remember Mr. Pipes. The curtains part with a sickly sweet breath of incense. Velvet wraps the inside of the hut like a fine chocolate box, with silk curtains delicately hanging down to provide translucent privacy for guests. Behind, the shadows of wealthy traders lie in the embrace of soft, well-plumped cushions, gently sipping from bronze hookah pipes until their eyes and troubles are somewhere else entirely. Let's request an audience with Mr. Pipes. We must have done this before, but I have no memory of it. The hooded proprietor keeps to itself at the back of the house. A particularly large hookah pipe delivers smoke into the darkness of its cloak. A gramophone beside it quietly plays a Bach concerto. The surfing boy returns, bowing apologetically. Mr. Pipes is relaxing and has no interest in either chitter or chatter. If you have business, can we present it to one of the staff? Otherwise, his master encourages you to avail yourself of the facilities. Okay, let's present the seal. A serving girl takes the wax seal to her snoozing master and whispers something into its cloak. A moment passes and she returns, with a certain amount of trepidation. My master trusts that this is what you require. Uh, may it do you some good, or at least no harm. Wait, what happened? What, did they give me something? You're the seal of Mr. Pipe's quality is now... Oh, they gave me their seal. You're the seal of Mr. Pipe's quality is now one. Take the seal to Mr. Barleycorn in the House of Rods and Chains. Ah. Let's sit down with a hookah pipe, I suppose. Lower our terror. It's only ten sovereigns. Yeah, easy, cheap terror reduction. Vigilant Nightingale, what was that? One of the urchins jabs at you with her weapon, a broomstick with a knife on the end. Friend or foe? Oh, I remember doing this. Friend, of course. And they're like, oh, okay. You can train with them. Talk to the captain, Seagrid. 
I know we've done this before. Yeah, there's nothing more to do there. I think I've done almost everything at Ackley's, but not, not everything. At the least, there's the person to find in the swamp, if nothing else. What about the monastery? Nothing to do there. I guess head into the marshes, then. Okay, well, I wandered around the swamp again, and then went mad, blacked out, and rescued by some urchins. The usual. <laughs> I don't know if I'm ever going to find that captain. Well, that is all there is to do here. Let's go back to Pan. like it's been so long since we've been to Eleutheria and it's not fully explored, so I don't think I'm going to cut out this journey just yet. Yeah, let's go figure out what that thing is that we just found. I also kind of want to illuminate this darkness here. revealed it a little bit. I'm just hoping this is a blind hermitage, I think it was called. <clears throat> well, that doesn't sound good. Ooh. Oh, they're grievers. Trade visions of the heavens for a moment of inspiration and experience. Okay, so I can just straight up trade, but how many visions of the heavens? Ooh, five of them. That's a lot. I only have 21. Well, I mean, I obviously need vi um, inspiration, so I'm going to do it. The question is how many times? I know we've done that before, so I'm not going to read it. Four moments of inspiration. And eleven visions of the heavens. So if there's any opportunity to give visions of the heavens, I'm going to do it. Is this one of those libraries? I don't remember what it gets you. Oh, there's like notes, I think, that you can trade in somewhere. Well, heck, we're at this unexplored area. Let's explore this and then head to Pan. Ooh, senior.
Just gotta be patient. Yeah, I think this is what I got from the thing. I think I got a scrap of ancient knowledge from the library and I can exchange those for Searing Enigma. Recover Sheev's apartment. Two scraps of ancient knowledge. <clears throat> Whoa, what is this? Your sleep is fevered, restless. The fragments of lore you have scavenged from the broken library of the heavens plague your thoughts. Ideas chase through your mind, winding a burning path. You wake. A sigil sears your vision. Record it quickly. Note each twist, each angle, before the image fades like a dream. A description of this sigil was concealed in the front piece of the first volume of the Ministry's prohibited Golhabar Redaction. The Ministry sought to hide it even from their own. You consult the clerk's notes. An entry suggests witnessing the music of the devils at the Howling Well. You have also heard reports of a sigil glimpsed deep in the mists of Whirlbury. Both locations could be worth visiting. The music of the devils at the Howling Well. Howling. That's probably the Well of the Wolf that I have yet to find. I think it's an Albion. Whirlberry is also an Albion as well, of course. So, I'm not sure how much more there is for us to find in Eleutheria as far as sigils go. see if there's anything I can do at Winter's Reside. It's been forever since I've been there. Did I officially join the club after I delivered all the letters and stuff? Or have I just not been back to Eletheria since... Oops, since doing that? 